How are you going? This video is just going to cover table C1, column 2. So what we're going to look at is single dwellings. Now, single dwellings, if you look at column 2, covers a house per phase. As it says in the descriptor on the top of the heading, it covers up per phase, which means three houses on one block with one house per phase. In column 2, they're interested in the number of points in regards to lighting and power, when we go up to stoves and other things that exceed 10 amps, then everything is brought back to a current value. All right, so if we had a nine kilowatt stove, we would bring that back to a current value by dividing the voltage into the power. Okay, so that applies all the way down the line to, now the unit from H to G, A to G, sorry, cover a normal house. From H downwards cover communal areas. That doesn't apply to a single dwelling. I'll talk about those in the second video. Okay, so looking at table C1, and we look at column two, if we go down the page, we see the first one is lighting. Now, A1 for lighting, we need to look at, there's two types. There's one there for just the generic lighting through the house, and then we have outside lighting. It needs to exceed a thousand watts to basically bring that back to its own current value. So if I have four 150 watt, oh, 250 watt lights, it's a thousand watts, that still counts as four points. As soon as I exceed the 1000 watts to 1500 watts, then I divide it by 230 and put it down as its own current value. All right, so if you have a look there, they're looking at number of points, it's three amps for the first 20 and then two amps for each additional one. What they're saying there is if I had 41 lights, it would be three amps for the first 20, another two amps for the second 20, which would make it 40. And because I've gone one amp into the second or third lot of 20, it would be another two amps. The total would be seven amps. You can see that in the examples laid out on the, on the front of the booklet that I've provided you with. So if you follow through with that, you'll see what I'm talking about. We go down to power, right, which is B1. You gotta be careful with it. There's a little bit of fine print there. It says socket, out, socket outlets not exceeding 10 amps, permanently connected electrical equipment not exceeding 10 amps and not included in the other load groups. Now what you've got to be careful of there is they're saying that anything below 2,300 watts, where do I get that from? 230 times 10 amps, maybe counted as a point. So if I have a dishwasher or a strip heater or some appliance in the house that's under 2,300 watts, it is counted as a power point or a point on that circuit, all right? So I could have four 25 watt fans they are below 2.3 meters, that's another point I've got to talk about, then they're counted as a power points, okay? If you look at B2 and B3, um, B3 and B2 are talking about 15 amp and 20 amp outlets. Now for B2, if you've got one outlet or 10 outlets or 50 amp outlets, 15 amp outlets, you only get 10 amps. It's not 10 amps per outlet, it's 10 amps regardless of how many you've got. B3 is talking about the same thing, regardless of how many 20 amp outlets, you got one or 50 or 100, it is only 15 amps. Now, the only catch on this, if you're reading the fine print down on the footnotes, okay, is if you have um, 10 15 amp outlets and you decide to add 120, all of the 15 or the low group in B2 will now move up to B3 and basically put them all under as 20 amp outlets. Okay, so that's something you've got to be careful of. All right, so we've looked at B1 saying that we've got to be careful that anything that exceeds 10 amps, they all then move into other load groups like table C, category C, category B, uh, sorry, D, E, F, if they exceed 10 amps. If they're below 10 amps, they all stay in there as power points, okay? So let's move up, we've now moved in. Now, don't forget the same thing in B1 is 10 amps for the first 20 and then five amps for each additional 20 points each after that in blocks of 20, all right? So if you've got 61, like I did with the lighting, it's 10, five, and five, because I've moved that one point into that next block of 20, okay? You'll see by the examples anyway, they're really, really laid, laid, out, laid out easily. Table C, oh, sorry, load group C, talks about ranges, so what they're doing now is 50% of the connected load, 
So for example, if I've got a nine kilowatt stove, I'll divide that by 50%, which is 4,500, divided by 230, and that'll bring me back to my current value, okay? Um, fixed space heating and air conditioning and stuff like that. Um, sometimes you might not get it as a kilowatt rating, you might get it as a um, low current already, the same on the range, they might say it's a nine kilowatt, but it's 32 amps or something. Once you've given a current value, that is what you need to then apply to this rule. All right, instantaneous hot water services, they're only 33.3% of the total current value or power value. Um, spa heaters and stuff like that, you gotta be careful there. They've got two, it's the largest um, of the pool pump, 75%, and then 75% of the largest um, spa pump. So the can are just two different things, the spa and the pool pump, are not counted as both together, and then 75% of that, they're counted as two different values, okay? Um, that brings us back down to all of the G and all that stuff through there. So once you get past G, it's not applicable then to communal lighting, um, communal socket outlets and all that, they all don't apply, okay? Um, have a go through the exercises. It'll um, help you open up what you need to learn on table C1. It's important you understand this table as it's a big part of your LET. Uh, exam all right all right have a go at them see how you go and i'll put the other videos on regarding the other two lots of questions in the book